had a lot of uh, emails come in from last night and something sometimes we go into a lot of realities and some of the basics are not really understood. And the summary of last night that so many emails had come in is that to rise above. In every situation, in every act in life there are characters and instead of he said, she said, we said, they said and then get into all the issues. Because every time they want to talk to the shaykh for du'a they want to explain all the characters. He said this, she said that, this like this, that's like that. And tariqah is coming to remind that go one step above and look above. Take the, the scenario, stop, contemplate and look above and see who's pulling those strings. And the majority of the time it's shaitan. And then when you stop you say, then what is shaitan's trying to gain from this situation? So it's never the arguments that's important, it's never the, the points in the argument that are important. It's never all of the incidents that are important but what is shaitan trying to achieve? And when we can rise above then the beginning of openings begin. If we stay within the material plane and, oh look at this one said like that, that one like this, this one like that, it's so dunya that the, ser the servant and the student is never rising. And they're lost in perpetual plays and as a result the plays intensify. We gave examples to each other. If you don't pass because Allah is al kareem we don't change a condition of a person until they change their condition. Means that the whole is responsible not the individual being tested. So no change will come until they change what's within themselves. We don't change the condition of a person until they change what's within themselves. And when they don't learn they go to the next test and it's intensified more. I don't know where I'm going, oh I go everywhere and this says that, this one says this, this one comes after me for that and that becomes a tremendous key. So many emails came in and said, oh I got a lot of clarification. Which is good, that's what we asked is that when, when a talk comes out it's good to email helpme at nurmuhammad.com, one to keep the line of communication so that you feel familiar with the shaykh, with the tariqah, that this is my guide, this is my teacher. And I understood and I was contemplating and give your understanding and how you're trying to deal with it. Then from that then even can go deeper into its teachings. So alhamdulillah people were responding, people were understanding that I should stop in these conflicts and arguments and slow down and think that what is shaitan now trying to achieve? Very few conversations will be to the benefit of Allah where somebody comes and praises you and encourages you towards your deen. Because shaitan is hitting you from six sides, in front, behind, above, below, to the right and to the left of you. And when Prophet described that, don't leave me for a blink of an eye to my nafs because the nafs is the partner with shaitan. And if for a moment you should blink, shaitan already on your head. Prophet is warning that if you blink the devil's on top of you. So it means that the fight is vigilant, is continuous. The negativity is all encompassing and the one whom is rising in their reality, their training and their practices has to be able to slow down, never react fast, never start yelling and screaming fast, never have a heated temper, have a slow, slow burn not fast. Burn slow if you have to burn because then it give you time to think what's really happening. As soon as you're able to think you can see the puppet master above making you to get angry, wanting to come against your belief, your practices, 
your understanding. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding and patience that use these practices, use what's being taught, use what Prophet is giving to the nation as a resource. And if we use that, the openings of the doors of sincerity because nobody's going to win. You're not going to say you conquered your devil, nobody's going to conquer their devil. But when you put in a good fight, Allah grants ikhlas that I'm happy with your struggle. You're continuously trying to catch it, you're continuously trying to, to grab the qadab, grab the anger, grab the, the losing of control as a result. Inna fatanaka fatan mubeen that I'm going to grant you a, a great opening, a blessed opening in which a madad and support begins to dress the soul of that individual to even the odds now. Because if Allah supports the servant then that support gives them more odds of understanding what shaitan is doing and how shaitan is attacking inshaAllah. What do we have? As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, does shaitan ever stop attacking? No, why would he? <laughs> Absolutely not. His level of faith is not matched by anything or anyone. That his faith and his creed is to take humanity down and he can't be moved, not in a, a, a of a fraction of an inch or millimeter, nothing. There will be no movement and, and no compromise by shaitan. So that's why you're not going to win a debate with the shaitan. You're not going to convince a shaitan not to, to bother you. So it's a'udhu billah and that's why Allah gave a'udhu billah otherwise He would have given other du'as to, to burn a shaitan, to kill a shaitan. But he says, no, no, it's, you, that's not going to be a game for you, you seek refuge in me from shaitan. So it means that we are not going to be victorious in taking him down. That's why, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Allah said, then run to me and that will be your safety and your shelter, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how to escape ourself? What to do when our heart and mind are going in opposite direction and causing chaos? How can we get rid of the feelings distracting us from the path? The meditation, the connection, the salawats, all the practices for energy because this is a battle against your head. Anything coming to your head is from your nafs and from shaitan because they're not, they're not coming into the heart. So the knowledge is we've taught many times before, the knowledge has to come and enter into the heart. If you take this knowledge and try to chew it in your head, hmm I wonder what he meant, already shaitan is up there and you've lost that knowledge because then he is going to convince you, he didn't really mean that, he meant this. And then as soon as you go to the washroom he's going to give you full khutbah, right? As soon as you go to the washroom, he starts teaching. If you try to meditate on your carpet, like what, what was meant, what was meant is very difficult. A lot of waswas comes because there are other emails is every time I sit down to meditate so many waswases are coming because shaitan doesn't want to teach you there. So then when we understand this system then you know shaitan is very real. And that when we make our salawats, make the meditation, bring the energy that I don't have, it's a sign of humility. I don't have the ability to fight this devil so I'm going to call for support. When I learn how to ask for madad and support then it's not what you know, it's who you know. And everybody does that for dunya. Everybody when they have a problem they call somebody bigger. And they call that big person, get me out of this problem. Well that's not shirk for those people? No, because it's dunya. Yeah, for Allah it's harder. If you have a big problem and you're not going to get yourself out of it then call whom Allah already loves. 
when you spiritually call upon them, keep them in your company, then these issues can be resolved. Their lights come to push away all these negativities and sicknesses and difficulties inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, how can we get rid of the burdens that we pick up from the world or the people we come across in daily life? And is there a way we can tell if we picked up something before it's too late and it starts? Yeah, assume that you always pick up something, then you don't go wrong. That's why the whole system in the timeless reality is all about energy and the angel book, was it the… In the pursuit of angelic power. All of those are energy books to teach what? That make sure you have your wudu, make sure you, you keep your wudu, make sure you have your taweez, make sure that your energy is fortified and that you, you have that whole system of energy. And as soon as you go out you know that that energy is attacking you, negative energy is attacking you. So you keep yourself shielded and when you come home or you come back to where you're supposed to be, again you wash, you make your wudu, you refresh everything and you're in continuous state of spiritual battle because they're not heedless. They don't think, oh I went out this time and I didn't get attacked. No, you just step on your door, a thousand or a million ifrit are coming after you. There's nothing that is not under attack. When you understand that, then you safeguard yourself. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't do everything that will lower your shield of protection. If you lower the shield of protection as if you open the gates of shaitan to come and attack. And if he comes and he attacks, he'll make you to go mad, he'll take away your brain, take away your ability to think and any type of thought that comes into you and that's why people will go insane. So it means this, these battles are real, this is our life, this is our existence. When we understand that then we safeguard ourselves from every negativity. People think they're clever now, oh they say, look marijuana is now open, no, no laws against it. So that's a scenario. Do you think that that is coming from Rahman? That I want all you people be happy and get high, don't worry about going through, be thrown in jail. No, it's from shaitan. So now that everybody is now legally going out and doing drugs, then the government comes back in small little reports and says, oh by the way there's a lot of mad disease now that the brain and neuroceptors of the brain are all becoming destroyed by some chemical in these. People yelling and screaming and going mad and having psychosis. Isn't that what shaitan wanted? Didn't we warn you about the… what's the movie? The I don't want to say the wrong one, one was the, the fruity box, bird box? Bird box. Yeah. Bird box. <laughs> right? The bird box? Because they would do something and the shaitans would… Uh, they would see him. Except the crazies they were so happy with the shaitans. Because this is what they're doing, they have an intention. They have an intention to destroy the mind and the faculty of the mind. And by doing these different chemicals and doing all these things or the neuroceptor of the brain begins to hallucinate and disconnect and uh, it's going to be uh, havoc on the streets. And that's all what shaitan wants. So the one whom is a spiritual warrior and trying to achieve, they keep themselves clean, keep themselves pure, they exercise, take care of themselves, take care of your body, take care of your mind, take care of your soul so that you're capable of defending yourself, your family and your community inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah uh, Sayyidi, what is the danger of not being armed with a taweez during meditation? This all in the same subject, means these are all from the timeless reality. Although I think some people like just to ask the question because he said, oh I asked the question, Shaykh, Shaykh answered it. But yeah, you have to still buy two books. <laughs> yeah. If you're willing to take a question that we've had in Timeless Reality then you get two books, give it out as a dawah for people on Amazon, inshaAllah. 
the ta'wees and, and all of spiritual practices. Anytime you're deficient in your spiritual practice, again, if you like sci-fi movies, when the ship is out and there's like a force field and there's aliens trying to attack the ship, attack the ship, doesn't common sense answer your, your, your question and our question? So imagine now the force field is up except a hole over here and I'll put the force field down over there. So this is <laughs> a big hole in the force field. <laughs> so the outside ships will be like, hey, who's this guy? Look, he opened the hole in his force field. So now all the aliens will come from there. So the ifrit, we can't see them. So this is why these are stations and talks from people of faith that uh, these creatures are all around. You, if you visualize in millions all around you, you're not seeing them. You feel every now and then itch, you feel a little bit of scratch, they're all everywhere. So everything you do is to keep a shield of protection and all your practices keep a shield of protection. Anything that you do to break that protection, then what happens? The field drops, these things are all over you. They're coming on to your physicality and you begin to show and exhibit the signs within the physicality, within the mind, within the heart, all, all over their being. A great source of sicknesses is from this because negative energy is attaching itself to people and sickening them. So in spiritual teaching and spiritual healing, it was all about the understanding of negative energy. If negative energy comes to you, every pain and sickness is now upon you. But the physical, they want to go to doctor and say, no, this is just a, a, a joint pain. What joint pain? What, for, what are you talking about joint pain? Yes, yeah, from the chemical in the body and they give all their nice medical terminology. Spirituality is much easier. No, this is negative energy and if it's able to come close enough to you, you want to call it arthritis, you want to call it joint pain, you want to call it pain, you want to call it suffering, you can make all those fancy terms, it's just negative energy is too able to lock on to you. So in your spiritual practices what are you able to do to push that away? Or it's something Allah give to you as a test. If you're doing your spiritual practices and that energy is able to push that away, then Allah wanted to test you to do your zikrs, do your practices stronger, push these different things away. So everything is related to spiritual energy and how much it can come and that's what we gave all the talks during those pandemics. These are the marada that Prophet described, these pandemics are when the shayateen, the marada, the nefarious creatures, they come too close to humanity, as a result they sicken them because of their contamination and their bad energies. And when you watch and put a piece of bread out, not, not anymore because it's not real bread. <laughs> bread I put out now for three weeks, you come back it's still nice and shiny because they did something to it. But before in ancient times <laughs> when bread was bread, you would put it out and what would happen? It would be called kapak what we call the mold. What is that? Creatures are coming. So these creatures are coming and they're pulling the energy from it because they don't take the physicality of it, they take the energy of the sustenance. So then you begin to see it turning grey. And if you spiritually train and you try to put your hand there, you feel it like a sparking energy because it's a dirtier energy. You feel the sparking. Because there's creatures are eating from there. So when Prophet gave for us, when you have food cover it, when you have drink out cover it because all of these negative energies are trying to come to take from it. So if we go back into our energy training and energy understanding, everything has a relationship with energy. So it's on the same subject of what we talked about last night, stop thinking physical that, you know, a physical person is going to tell me what's wrong with this. No, they don't know anything. Everything is related to an energy. So you have to go back to, are my energy practices strong enough to be pushing this back? And why is this negative energy coming? And I go back and then I must be doing something 
that this portal is, is, is opening, this negativity is able to come too close to me and as a result I'm in continuous difficulty. So it's all, this is the great struggle when everything is thought from a spiritual realm. Then whatever you take from the physical and physical remedies, that's alhamdulillah, that's on top of it is blessing. But when you equate back to your spiritual training then is, a, is an opening for the servant that Allah give them even more understanding in the spiritual realm of what's happening inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi our emotions, all nafs, is there any point in trying to communicate with people or is that nafs like communicate frustrations, needs etc? No, communication is communication. Your ability to communicate then is an, an art. If you see the way the shaykhs talk and how they were trained to talk it is a, an art form. But people lack this understanding so communication becomes a nafsani. So two people sitting down and said, I want to give you advice on how to do this in your business. Immediately the other person, no, 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 I don't like that, I don't do that. So everything's always a, is too direct. So tariqah comes in the trainings for the shaykh is they never talk directly to people, never mention a name but everything is by masal, by example, an example of such and such. Somebody can say, it looks like you're talking directly about me. I said, but did I mention your name? No. You're just being paranoid that maybe it's about you but in reality it's probably about everyone but mostly about myself too. So the tariqah comes to teach the eloquence of speech that's never directed at any one person but everybody should be humble enough to think, oh shaykh is talking uh, to me but never directly to anyone. So when we learn that then when we have our own conversations they should be not directed personally. And if they gave an example, if you want to ride a wild horse, if you think you're going to come from in front of the horse and pet and say, I'm going to ride you, immediately he's going to bite you. If you've ever seen a wild horse, his big teeth and bite you right away. Then you come, oh I'll come from the back and, and pet the horse and he'll let me to come, he'll kick you with one of those legs and knock your head off. So somehow you have to fool the horse that I'm going to be riding you. So then how do they do that is they bring a bag of food and they begin to give food to the horse. And as the f horse is eating then they can begin to mount the horse. So you have to be ridden without knowing that somebody is teaching you. So the system is the same, the tariqah system is the same, everything has to be solved, the, the atmosphere has to be right, everything has to be, people have to be happy. Then the shaykh's teachings can come out because it's the nafs of people that the shaykh is trying to deal with. If it comes too hard against the nafs of somebody then they're going to come against him. So they have to be in a peaceful state where the nafs is happy, oh look we're going to have good dinner, we're, we're going to do like this, I like this talk, I like those recitations and then the reality can be dressed upon insan inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.